Nigeria is undertaking major environmentally sound and climate friendly programs and trading the path of sustainability. President Buhari addresses UN summit on climate change, says Nigeria has institutional framework to cut carbon emission by 20%. IPOP is not only prescribed in Nigeria, but has also been designated a terrorist organization. Information and Culture Ministry reacts to planned asylum for proscribed IPOP members. The safety on Africa roads should be a collaborative effort. Federal government expresses willingness to support Sierra Leone for effective road safety management. And bandits kill three out of the abducted Greenfield University students as leaders pay last respect for late charging President Idris Dabi. Good evening and thanks for joining us on NTA Network News tonight. I am Jumwa Yusuf. Adeola Kami Akira joins us from Lagos and Asmao Abibu Shagari will join us in Sokoto later. President Mohamedou Buhari has made a strong representation to member nations of the global community to not only embrace what he calls circular economy, but also ensure sustainable production and consumption models that will expedite the attainment of the long-term goals of the Paris Agreement. Nigeria, he said, is committed to galvanizing relevant stakeholders for climate action towards achieving the objectives. This was in a statement to the Virtual Leaders Summit on Climate Change. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has a report. The Virtual Leaders Summit on Climate Change was convened by the U.S. President Joe Biden in furtherance of his decision to return the United States to the Paris Agreement as well as support larger transition process of global economies to low carbon development pathways. And today I'm excited to welcome my counterparts in Spain, Nigeria, Vietnam and Poland to share their thinking on how to realize the economies of the economic opportunities of the climate response. President Muhammad Buhari described as welcoming the convening of the summit by President Biden at a time the world is experiencing tremendous vulnerability from the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change impacts amongst other global challenges. This summit would indeed prove instrumental in galvanizing high-level political support for the implementation of the Paris Agreement and its cutwise rule book. As one of the most vulnerable nations, Nigeria is undertaking major environmentally sound and climate-friendly programs and trading the path of sustainability. Since ratifying the Paris Agreement in 2016, Nigeria has ruled out several policy enablers and set up institutional frameworks to cut emission by 20% unconditionally as well as 45% conditionally with international support by the year 2030. Nigeria is convinced that through net zero transition, tremendous prospects are available for job creation and other economic benefits. We are expeditiously implementing programs that stimulate gradual transition away from the use of wood stoves to kerosene, liquefied natural gas, biogas, and electricity. The immediate effects include healthy competition among private sector players leading to higher productivity, employment, and faster service delivery. And in agricultural production, the president said the federal government is targeting improved efficiency and productivity through the provision of accurate and timely weather forecasting to farmers, supply of drought-tolerant and early maturing crop varieties. 
as well as promoting empowerment towards diversification of sources of livelihoods. The overall outcome of the highlighted actions have translated into food supply sufficiency, improved nutrition, less hunger, increased employment, more job opportunities, better livelihoods, reduce poverty, decrease vulnerability to health challenges, and higher quality of life. Apart from developing a toolkit that mainstreams Nigeria's national development plans with the Paris Agreement, the president said the country is also prepared to support regional, continental, and global multilateral processes towards attaining its lofty objectives, saying the fight to redress the impact of climate change is the responsibility of all. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. In line with the current administration's commitment to the rule of law, fairness and enabling a stable business climate for investment, President Mohamed Buhari has approved the restoration of the leases on OMLS 123, 124, 126 and 137 to the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC which is in production sharing contract with Adax Petroleum, a company wholly owned by the government of the People's Republic of China on the blocks. The leases belonging to the Federation was, were revoked on March 30, 2021. This development reaffirms the commitment of President Buhari to the rule of law and sanctity of contracts, while directing the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, to retract the letter of revocation of the leases. The President also directed NMPC to utilize contractual provisions to resolve issues in line with the extant provisions of the production sharing contract arrangement between NMPC and ADAX. The restoration of the blocks to NMPC will boost the organization portfolio, thereby making the corporation to, in the long run, boost its crude oil production and in turn increase the revenue it generates to the Federation account. Governor Hope Uzodima of Imo State has formally briefed President Mohamed Buhari on the recent attacks on police and Nigerian correctional services facilities in the state by gunmen. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has the report. President Muhammad Buhari was far away in London when Imo, the eastern heartland, came under attack by gunmen who burned down the state police headquarters and other formations of the security outfit in parts of the state as well as the Nigerian Correctional Services Facility where inmates were freed. Governor Hope Uzodima told President Buhari that the situation in the state is now relatively calm. The nearly 50 people arrested have made useful confessional statements and thanked the federal government for its prompt intervention. Of course, I know the genuine interest of the president for Nigerians. I have had a series of discussions with him. And at every given time I've asked for one intervention or the other, it is given to me. And it is for the interest of my people. So, but then, for those things to function, we need an enabling environment. That is why the enemies of progress, not deterred by the progress the government is making, are now out to scuttle uh, good governance. However, I think we are rising to the occasion. I can tell you, sooner than later, today will become a turn of the past, and Nigeria will move forward. The Imo State governor, who condemned in strong terms calls for secession, expressed the belief that the nation's strength lies in her diversity. He made a case for genuine public cooperation and support in the task of securing the country for sustainable growth and development. We don't have another country. The only country we can beat our chest and call our own is Nigeria. And we must work to, towards ensuring that the integrity of our country, the security situation in our country is such that it allows people, residents, both citizens, to go about their businesses without the fear of molestation. Anything, any problem anywhere, any part of the country, is also a problem everywhere in the country. So it is not today, maybe most state, you don't know when it will be your own state. So if we don't come now and nip this in front of the board, it means that um, one day we may not have a country. So let us defend our country. 
is very important. The governor commended President Muhammadu Buhari for his selflessness in service and commitment to a greater Nigeria. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Now let's bring you up to speed with other news. The federal government says should the United Kingdom go ahead with its plan to grant proscribed IPOP and Mossad members asylum, it will be undermining the Nigerian government's fight against terrorism. Information Culture Minister Lai Mohammed stated this during an outing on the news agency of Nigeria's flagship program, NAN Platform. Anthony Fossen has the details. News agency of Nigeria's editorial team, led by its managing director, Buki Ponle, engaged the information and culture minister in an interview that lasted over one hour. Taking him one after the other on the state of the nation, Lai Mohammed responded aptly. But when the issue of the United Kingdom planning to offer asylum to the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPO, came up, the minister went hand on. As a spokesperson for the federal government of Nigeria, I will say that if indeed the report that the UK uh, will grant asylum to supposedly persecuted IPOB and uh, mass of uh, members is true, then something is wrong somewhere. But I guess the background of uh, the fact that IPOB is not only prescribed in Nigeria. But it has also been designated a terrorist organization here in Nigeria. The UK decision is, dis is very dis disrespectful of Nigeria as a sovereign nation. And it, I understand it amounts to sabotaging our fight against terrorism. And generally, it undermines Nigeria's security and even our national unity. And it's unconscionable. At the same time, it's inexplicable. He said the decision by the UK government, if it is true, calls for question the UK government's real intention. On security threats to the nation, the minister fingered elites, whom he said are fanning the embers of disintegration in the country, but warned that they will bear the greater consequences if the country breaks up. If Nigeria should disintegrate today, we are going to overrun the Republic, we overrun Togo, and they will send us back, yeah, of course. And they should, I know why the elites are going to suffer. Hmm. Some professors will be working in Berkeley, in Togo, just to survive. Because we saw it happen when the librarians came here. So they should, it's in their own enlightened self that they should work to fix Nigeria. The minister maintained that the elites are expected to be a rallying point and assets of the nation. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. The House of Representatives Committee on Defense has stressed the need to build local capacity in the manufacture of defense equipment. The committee said this will enable security agencies to tackle more effectively the challenges of insecurity. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the committee gave the pointer during a visit to an indigenous defense equipment manufacturing company in Abeokuta, Ogun State. An inhibition to most countries battling various forms of security challenge is acquisition and deployments of defense equipment, mostly imported and unfortunately are not bought off the shelf. The Chairman House Committee on Defense, Representative Babajime Benson, during a visit to this defense equipment manufacturing firm, in which the Nigerian Army has 15% ownership share, said local manufacture should be encouraged and supported. This company has shown capacity. We've driven in their MRAPs. We've seen their bulletproof uh, vest. We've seen that they, they've employed Nigerians, young Nigerians. Several questions came up during an interaction between the lawmakers and management of the firm. Many times, uh, most of our armor town always being hijacked by Boko Haram. Is there any kind of a device that you kind of input the if it diver, if it, if it get a jack that you can actually trace are able to let us know where exactly the location or maybe the army can do the uh, attack to go and recover our our vehicle. So the tracker will you can locate where the vehicle is, you can demobilize the vehicle. Not only that, you can visualize every single thing. You can even listen to the conversation in the vehicle. 
the firm is already into exports of some of these equipments to neighboring countries, Lami Ali, NTN News. All international airports across the country will soon have front decks to ensure that due process is adhered to while taking mineral resources out of the country. This was one of the outcomes of a meeting between the Chief Executives of Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. This is a meeting of two agencies saddled with the responsibility to ensure due process, one in the finance and economy, while the other in the extractive sector. Being Africa's largest exporter of oil, the country's economy revolves around oil and extractive commodity. With irregularities in both sectors, it is not surprising that NATI and EFCC are partnering, especially when about $20 billion in recoverable revenues in the oil and gas as well as the mining sector were identified. We are going to collaborate with NATI to ensure that uh, what has been happening in the oil sector as well as uh, in the solid mineral sector is no more happening. We have um, identified the gaps, we know what the problems are. But of course, we will jointly, of course, work with the uh, Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development to uh, do some of uh, administrative uh, gaps that, that we have identified. We are here to seek collaboration because we need our reports to be implemented in such a way that there should be consequences for bad behavior. And then you know, encouragement for good conduct. Their collaboration is expected to promote more transparency and accountability in the extractive industries. Up high ed on the news, the ingenuity of Nigerian girls in ICT on display. Details after the break. Do stay. Welcome back. Abductors of Greenfield University students in Kaduna have shot dead three of the abductees. A statement by the Kaduna State Commission of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, says the remains of the three students were found on Friday in Kwanan Baturi village, a location near the university. Governor Nasir Rufai has condemned the killing of the students, describing it as sheer wickedness, inhuman and an outright desecration of human lives. He said the bandits represent the worst of humankind and must be fought at all costs for the violent wickedness they represent. The governor, on behalf of the government and people of Kaduna State, sent deep condolences and empathy to the students' families and the university community as he prays for the repose of their souls. Meanwhile, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Saidiya Umar Farooq, has expressed dismay over the recent killing of a staff and abduction of some students of Greenfield University, a private institution located along Kaduna Abuja Highway by suspected gunmen. In a statement issued by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Bashir Noura al Ghali, the minister sympathizes with the Kaduna State Government and the institution and parents of the abducted students. Hajiya Farouk equally commiserates with the family of the staff who was killed during the attack, praying for God to console the families and security agencies to ensure the safe return of the students while urging government, state governments and school authorities to provide adequate security in schools across the country. Following the fire incident that raised a female hostel and killed one student at the Federal Government College, Kefi, the Minister of State for Education, Chukwemeka Nwajibu, on assessment visit to the school has ordered for urgent and comprehensive investigation into the incident. Suleiman Ove Musa reports. Two facilities at the school to ascertain the impact of the inferno. The minister described the incident as sad and regrettable while commiserating with the management staff as well as family of the deceased Favor Tony, a 12-year-old JSS1 student who celebrated her birthday less than 24 hours before the ugly event. We've seen everything that has happened. We're making our own analysis and we'll take measures in response there too. Parents of the disease are still battling to come to terms with the death of their daughter. You keep teenagers, GS1 students, entirely GS1 students, teenagers, children that don't know anything. You keep them in a dormitory without any supervision. Some of the victims are receiving medical treatment at the Federal Medical Center, Kefi, and the National Hospital, Abuja. 
Although the principal of the college declined comment, the minister ordered for a thorough investigation on the cause of the inferno. From Kefi, Suleiman of Musa, NTN. Nigeria practically demonstrated the theme of the 10th anniversary of the global celebration of the International Day of Girls in ICT. Connected Girls Creating Brighter Future by taking an advocacy to the root to convince the next generation of women to take up the challenge and be vanguards of change. Momso Demendati reports. Women the world over have been striving not only to occupy the spheres of power and decision making, but also close the wide gap of gender inequality in ICT. And the 2021 International Day of Girls in ICT has offered these women the opportunity to further pursue these targets. The death rates of motor accidents across the world is really disturbing me. So what inspired us with this robot traffic is to control the traffic to reduce the death rates. We girls are not left out in the battle to move the world forward. And so... Students of Government Girls Science Secondary School Dute will never be the same after this morale-boosting experience to encourage them to aspire for the top and be steadfast in their choice of ICT courses in order to use technology and proper solutions to real-life problems. I consider education the most important thing in your life because with good education you can stand on your own. All the problems that we are facing today in the society, tame it down when we have educated mothers, educated women, especially in the sciences. ICT is what moves the world today. You can see we are already thinking ahead. 20 years to come, that means when we're navigating the traffic, uh, the road, the, the vehicles there would actually have a sign that would tell us there's congestion, this is an offender, and then there would be corrections. The girls are already going ahead in ICT to invent robots that can also, you know, help in uh, solving problems in the society. Persistent is the word. They need to keep pressing on. The International Day of Girls in ICT is a global movement to increase the representation of women and girls with equal access to opportunities. Hashtag Girls in ICT. Momso Damien Lati, NT News. The Abdul Samad Rabiu Africa Initiative has commenced project initiation consultations for its one billion naira grant to Nigeria's foremost university, the University of Ibadan, as part of its Asar Africa Tertiary Education Grant Scheme. Francis Form reports. The initiative, which core areas of intervention are education, health and social development in Africa, focuses mainly on equipping facilities, researchers, healthcare practitioners and community level service providers, and also supporting the efforts of various governments in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa. Representative of the chairman of Abdul Samad Rabiu Africa Initiative, Dr. Aliu Idi Hong says, the foundation is committing $100 million annually for social development, health and education interventions in Nigeria and Africa through the initiative. Six billion naira has been allocated to six premier universities, one per geopolitical zone in the country that will benefit toward augmenting their resources and intervening in their area of need to improve the quality of services they render in their institutions. Acting Vice Chancellor, University of Ibadan, commended Abdul Samad Rabiu Africa Initiative for the gesture, adding that the initiative is expected to revamp the educational sector in Nigeria with specific reference to the university system in the country. And uh, in the final analysis, it will empower us to train our students in ways that would make them to be globally competitive. This comes barely a month after the Abdul Samad Rabiu Africa Initiative donated 1 billion naira to the Ahmadu Bello University's area towards the provision of student housing and a faculty. Francis from NTA News. The federal government has expressed willingness to assist and support Sierra Leone in the drive to ensure effective road safety management in the country. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, said this when the delegation from Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority alongside the Federal Road Safety Corps paid him a cuts visit. Oyeyemi Ajayi has details. 
Visit of the five-man delegation from Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority is part of plan to understudy the Federal Road Safety Corps operation and its achievements in order to reproduce such in their country for effective road management. The delegation seeks capacity building, logistic support for post-crash mechanism, and plans to make the Federal Road Safety Corps the sole supplier of road signages in Sierra Leone. That there are a lot of challenges in meeting the demands for road safety concerns in our country. We started off with emulating the good efforts and strides by the Federal Road Safety of Nigeria. Though we had never met in person, but I must say it here that we had carefully studied and still studying and continue to study their website and emulate the good strides they've made thus far. In ensuring safer roads in Sierra Leone, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation pointed out that there is the need for proper training of officers of the Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority, which Nigeria is ready to assist with through the FRSC. Uh, there will be no hesitation on the part of the management of the Federal Road Safety Corps in Nigeria to receiving your people here for training. We will not hesitate in providing those opportunities for you. Because the safety on African roads should be a collaborative effort. This visit is also expected to strengthen the relations between the Federal Road Safety Corps and the Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority as a step further in boosting the bilateral relations between both countries. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTN. President Mohamedou Buhari rejoices with Governor of Benue State Samuel Otom on the occasion of his 60th birthday. In a statement, the president joins family and friends to celebrate the governor, thanking him for a life of service to his state and the nation. As the former minister marks the Diamond Jubilee, President Buhari urges him to rededicate his life to working for the prosperity and well-being of the people of Benue State. He wishes the governor many years in good health. Meanwhile, President Mohamedou Buhari warmly Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari warmly felicitates with the Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of Godap Nigeria Limited, Godwin Abayomi, on his 80th birthday. Gov President Buhari commends him for his industry and job provision through his engineering and construction works, not only in Nigeria, but also outside the country. His commitment and dedication to humanity through his selfless service to his community. The President joins family and friends in celebrating the Kogi State Bond Real Estate entrepreneur for filling the gap in the provision of housing infrastructure in the country. He prays for a long, healthy life for Mr. Abayomi. Let's now join Adiola in Lagos for the next set of reports. It's all yours, Adiola. The Nigerian Breweries PLC says it has evolved strategies to surpass its financial target and meet the expectations of stakeholders while excelling in customer satisfaction. Chairman of the Board of Directors, Chief Kola Jamudu, made this known at the annual general meeting of the company in Lagos. Samuel Johnson quotes the chairman as saying that being a shareholder and customer of the Nigerian Breweries is now fashionable. Some of your competitors and peers, some of them have not been able to pay dividend in the last five years. The future is bright because looking at all the products and new products they are also introducing. They are some of the shareholders on ground due to the COVID-19 protocols to attend the 75th annual general meeting of the Nigerian Bureau's PLC, a foremost beverage manufacturing outfit in Nigeria since 1949. Despite the devastating effect of COVID-19 on the global and local markets, the company was able to post 337 billion naira as net revenue in the year 2020. Chairman of the Board of Directors, Nigerian Bureau's PLC, Chief Kola Jamodu, and the company secretary assured the customers and investors that Nigerian Bureau's is rejigging and evolving measures to satisfy and saturate local market in addition to expounding the export. Every cause to be grateful and be thankful to our staff at all levels, our distributors, our consumers, all the stakeholders for their continued 
interest in the consum consumption of our products. The reality is that a shareholder that puts his money in a business needs some level of return. And that is what we have consistently done all through the years. Highlights of the annual general meeting include the approval of 7.5 billion Naira dividends to shareholders, re-election of non-executive directors and three shareholders' representatives into the audit committee. In Lagos, Samuel Johnson, NTA News. One of the largest manufacturers and distributors of hygiene and laundry care products in Nigeria, Aspira Nigeria Limited, has unveiled multiple award-winning artists and producer David Adeleke, popularly known as the Vido, as its brand ambassador. The move, the company says, will further enhance the brand's identity. Imole Ayotokede Ogunfowora has details. The unveiling of Tevido as the face of Aspira's Viva Plus laundry sanitizer detergent powder is based on its dynamism, popularity, and immense contributions to the entertainment industry, which has put Nigeria on the global space. Head of marketing, Aspira Nigeria Limited, Santosh Naya, disclosed that the partnership is a huge step towards achieving the company's mission of becoming the highest provider of home products at affordable prices and efficient delivery. There is an alignment between Davido's vision and the core values of Viva as a brand. The synergy between both brands would impact the society in positive, unique and significant ways. The product is a very, very prima. We are not even uh, uh, ready to compromise our quality anything. Because, of course, we have a lot of challenges in the market, but despite of we are maintaining our product quality and our company reputation, all this. Davido stated that he joined the brand after conducting due diligence and background study of the company, which he discovered has initiated several youth-oriented projects and community development schemes. We live in a society where our environment is very, very important. So it was just a no-brainer to me. So, you know, everybody in the world, not only Africa, in the world, you're looking at this, this is Viva Plus Detergent Powder, you know, everybody here in Watch Clothes. I hope so. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, this is Viva Plus, and I want to thank Aspira as well for the opportunity. Although Aspira Nigeria Limited commenced operations in 2009, production of Viva Plus detergent powder began in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country in order to reduce the risk of spreading bacteria in addition to keeping clothes clean. In Lagos, Imole Ayotukidi Ogunfowora, NCA News. And that's it from Lagos, but we will be taking another break. The news will continue thereafter. Do stay with us. Thanks for rejoining us. In line with the federal government's desire that every Nigerian should go into agriculture for sustainable food security, a non-governmental organization, Anamero Idofe Anamero Foundation, has keyed into this vision by training and empowering over 5,000 farmers in Edo North. Victor Odian Acha reports that the training has as its theme food security, a panacea for social economic development. Moved by the passion to add value to farmers in the do not, as well as contribute its quota towards ensuring that food consumed in the country are produced in Nigeria. The founder of Anamero Idofe Anamero Foundation, Mr. Sondi Dekeri Anamero, decided to train the 5,000 farmers and produce sellers in the do not, as well as empower them to start up a business in various farming sectors. Your courage, your commitment for producing food and other crops is appreciated. I know the challenges are daunting, but they are supportable. In every day of our life, three times in a, three times a day, we need a farmer. This is the more reason we have to appreciate our farmers. This is the more reason that I think the, the Anamero Idofe and Anamero Foundation thinks that the best way that is due to them in society. 
They were various facilitators who spoke on different areas of farming, which include cocoa farming, value chain, rice farming, agricultural cooperative societies, cashew production, and farm produce marketing. He remember where he started from and is trying to make sure that uh, people actually gain a lot from what he benefited from. It's an opportunity for us to also know how to do a lot of things that we never knew before. Apart from the training, the 5,000 participants from the six local government areas of Edo North went home with 15,000 naira each and agrochemicals to set up their farms. In Okwila, Victor Odion Acha, NTA News. The message of peaceful coexistence in Nigeria has been re-echoed by the Chairman Northern Governors Forum and Plateau State Governor Simon Bakola, along, among other Christian and Muslim leaders, at a symbolic Ramadan iftar at Al Habibia Islamic Society in Abuja, where he joined thousands of Muslims to break their fast. Abdullah Ajia reports. In the month of Ramadan comes Allah's mercy with moral, spiritual, and social benefits and blessings. The presence of the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum and Governor of Plato State, Simon Lalong, and John Cardinal Onaikon, among other interfaith leaders at the Al Habibiya Break of Fast, further demonstrates the desire to always use interfaith dialogue to unite the country for peace and unity. I do this and I express this and I send it outside to my brothers, especially who are in leadership, governors everywhere that we must encourage this religious harmony. No religion promotes wickedness. So once you we see that something is happening that is actually going the way of wickedness, of not being kind to one another, the first thing that a religious leader should do is to say, stop it. We are all created by God. And where if you're actually serving God, where whomever you see, you see God in them. And when you see God in them, everything is equal. We are so pleased that these two different faiths are together we are participated in the iftar today the tenth day of ramadan we are so pleased and this is how it's supposed to be wherever you do not have distinguish before between any persons by the record presented over 2,000 people get their iftar meals daily from the al habibiya ramadan food bank program this gesture the visitors said should be emulated and sustained for the overall good of the country abdullah hajia ncn news the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, says it has introduced a new feature in the ongoing registration for the 2021 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, tagged Know Your Registration Officer, to fortify the registration process, guard against abuse and manipulation of candidates, as well as for stolen examination practices. This is to ensure that candidates know where and who is registering them for the 2021 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination Board and Direct Entry Exercise. Asmao is in Sokoto and she will be our guide. Hello, Asmao. Jumai, good evening and welcome to Sokoto. Governor Amin Waziri Tambol has kicked against workers' retrenchment as a means to saving of fund public services. He made the disclosure at a stakeholders' meeting organized by the Sokoto State Internal Revenue Services. Dalat Abdullahi has the report. The meeting was convened to discuss the transformation agenda of the Sokoto State Government on matters related to state internal revenue services. The meeting focused on achievements recorded in the first quarter of 2021 after the launching of the state IGR portal eTax for the billing and collection of all revenue accruing from ministries, departments and agencies of government in the state. The development has led to the generation of over 3.7 billion naira in the period under review, indicating over 50% growth in collections. The transformation agenda had also enabled the registration of more than 2,000 taxpayers properly classified into sectors consisting financial institutions, healthcare, and education, among others. Governor Amin Wazire Tambwal stated that the transformation agenda was necessary to meet the demands of the global economic realities, noting that no government can operate without revenue. Maybe we should sit down and consider agreeably on pro rata basis that certain percentage of salaries be suspended and then when the government can afford it now, 
It pays the workers the areas. His mission, he noted, is to leave a legacy of well-built institutions and effective system that work for the good of all. In Sokoto, Dalato Abdullahi, NTA News. The solution to the problem of Nigeria cannot be achieved through religious and ethnic war until Nigerians sit up and realize the humanity in them. This was the view of Aide Ekiti Kingdom, Oba Al Haji Abdul Mumini Adebayo or Rishak Bemi, when he led two other traditional rulers from southwest of Nigeria on a courtesy call at the Sultan Palace. Sheikh Muhammad Deti completes the report. While affirming the belief and support of southwest traditional rulers on the leadership of the Sultan, the monarch called for peace, unity, and development of Nigeria. Oba Abdul Mumini emphasized that the large population and diversity of Nigeria should not be the cause of the nation's challenges, but sources from where the country can draw its strength. He said the country was blessed with diverse socio-cultural and religious backgrounds. Nigerians should therefore sit and say no to agents of separation for self-based reasons. The traditional ruler gave example with the countries like India and China who use their population to advance in all spheres of life. Sultan Muhammad Sa'ad Abubakar described the visit as a means of strengthening the ties and relationship between the Sultanate and the Southwest traditional institutions. He applauded the delegation for the visit at a time the country is battling with issues of insecurity. So even to spare this period and this country to dedicate ourselves, devote ourselves to the true worship of Almighty Allah, our Creator, and face squarely the problems of Nigeria. I believe by now we must have gone far in finding resolution to our problems. The two other traditional leaders from the southwest are Dr. Olushogun Adekimi and Oba Ola Folarin Olakayode Ogun Senwu. In Sokoto, Sho Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Jumwa in Abuja for more news. Thank you, Asma. We we'll take more messages. The news continues shortly. Do stay. Welcome back. A funeral ceremony for late Chadian President Idris Deby has been held in Chad's capital, Jamena, with thousands of people paying respect to the leader who died of wounds sustained while leading his troops against a rebel offensive. French, French President Emmanuel Macron and several African leaders were present at the ceremony on Friday, despite rebel warnings that they should not attend for security reasons. Justin Bem Unyi reports that Nigeria was represented by a high-powered delegation led by the Minister of State Foreign Affairs, Zuberu Dada, and Governor of Borno State, Babagana Umara Zulu. Chad held late President Idris Deby's funeral Friday amid mounting tensions as the rebels say they do not recognize the slain president's son as a new leader and threaten to depose him. Reports have it that there was heavy deployment of troops in the face of security concerns. French President Emmanuel Macron and Congo's President Félix Tshisekedi were among the heads of state at the ceremony for the late president who ruled the Central African nation for 30 years and died at the age of 68. Macron pledged support for the country's stability and integrity, but also urged his military successors to steer a smooth return to civilian rule. He addressed his words to the casket saying, you lived as a soldier. You died as a soldier with weapons in hand. You gave your life for Chad in defense of its citizens. France will be there to support Chad without any hesitation, helping a peaceful Chad to keep its promise to its children and to all of its components. The transition will also have a role to play. And we will be there at its side. Friday's ceremony also saw a military march past and a speech by Debbie's son, General Mohammed Kaka Debi Idno, who the army named as the country's new leader. He vowed to stay loyal to the memory of his father and pledged to continue the legacy of dialogue, forgiveness, peace and unity that the late president was admired for. Justin Bemunyi, NTA News. And on Sports Update, Bade is right here with me in the studio to bring us letters from the world of sports. Indeed, Bade, these are trying times for football around the world. I tell you, football must be competitive. Mm. And I said, all right, welcome to Sports Update. I'm Bade Adelaide. 
After their failed breakaway attempt earlier this week, Arsenal returned to Premier League action this evening against Everton. However, things did not go in favour of the Gunners after a terrible mistake from their goalkeeper almost condemned them to a 1-0 loss. In fact, the match is now over and it has condemned them to a 1-0 loss. The European chances of Mikola Teta's men are now hanging by a very tiny thread. All right, still on the Premier League, Liverpool will be hoping to get their top four charge back on track when they host Newcastle United at Anfield on Saturday with a match live on NT Sports 24 from 12 noon. Other fixtures will see West Ham United and Chelsea clash later on Saturday with Leeds United and Manchester United facing off at Elland Road on Sunday. Meanwhile, as the backlash of the failed European Super League project continues to ravage top club sites in Europe, General Secretary of the Nigeria Football Federation Mohamed Sanusi says FIFA and UEFA prioritize players and clubs' welfare over lucrative deals. If FIFA cares about businesses, you can take that away because you cannot do anything without money. But more importantly, FIFA cares about the health and well-being of players. Finally, Nigeria Customs Women recorded their second win at the 2021 Africa Club Volleyball Championship on Friday, beating ASEC of Cote d'Ivoire in straight sides. The Nigerian representatives won the first set 26 to 24, the second 25 to 13, and the third 25 to 11. Their male counterparts will be in action on Saturday when they take on Rwanda Energy in a play of 9 to 12 counter. And that will be all on Sports Update. It's now back to Jimmy. Thank you, Biden. Not a good day. Arsenal lost and not happy. And that's Network News tonight. Don't forget to be a star with NTA as we wage war against rape and rapist. I am Jumma Yusuf. Good night.